I found the idea of pluralism really good and it's something that I'd like to adopt. But you brought it out as being part of Hinduism. Do the thing is I um if you could explain what part of Hinduism it's from because um growing up to me Hinduism's been taught as a thing hey you're going to pray to these gods because we're Hindu and that's about it. So if you could explain that. First of all I mentioned to you that this thing is not something that's just something new that we have generated called pluralism is very ancient idea and in the ancient scripture the rigveda there's a beautiful verse which says ekam asatta vipra bahuda vadanti he says if you want to look search for unity in diversity there are many approaches if you want to look for something even if you don't call it god ultimate reality the nature what is it that's underpinning this reality to approach that there are variety of different ways Now this is central since the Rigveda, it's very ancient scripture of authority of Hindus. Authority, this scripture of authority. But it's not only in Hinduism. I'll just show you the variation. In Jainism, are there any Jains here? In Jainism, this is called an ekantvad. This is a central feature of Jainism. No absolutism. Every approach you take is relative. It has to relate to you, otherwise you can't talk about it. And yet there are many approaches, an ekantvad, many ways of relating to reality. So it's a central feature of Jainism. Does it stop there? No. Sikhism. One of the unique feature of Ardhini Sikhs here, one of the unique feature of Sikh religion that I find endearing and very loving is this. It's the first attempt of pluralism. Here you see Guru Nanak trying to reconcile Hinduism and Islam. Very difficult task. Very difficult. And that's why many gurus lost their lives trying to reconcile, trying to bring them together. again you see attempt of pluralism now i've just given you some vision of pluralism but then you see are there many gujaratis here two three <coughs> only two or three i can't use a gujarati phrase but i will if you ask your grannies they will be singing bhajans and the bhajan will say this is standard ekaj ishwar jujwa jujwa naam same god many names this is central bhajan the all the grannies are singing away that's called pluralism granny but they know don't call us it's our bhajan it's pluralism or they will sing you know lovely bhajans that oh lord by which name should i address you because i'm going to send you a kankotri you know wedding invitation which name should i send you the and what is your by address by the way you seem to have so many addresses pluralism so in the cultural terms it is already in this reason why hindus are comfortable with people of other religion they don't feel frightened they don't feel compromised if i go to a church i don't i go to the church they give lectures there I go to a mosque as well and give you know, to the Gayatri there. So when I enter that, I say, ah, this is the way these people like to think of spirituality. Good for them. So it doesn't compromise. It doesn't make us feel frightened of other religions. So it's in. It's there. You'll find Hindus. This is standard stuff in United Kingdom. Wherever a Hindu goes in public life, in a place of work, at university, schools, they merge. And not that they lose their identity, but they merge. They integrate extremely well. This is ingrained. Pluralism ingrained. they don't feel offended by other people or people of other religion they play with it not because they are saying oh i'm going to give up my religion and again pluralism doesn't say you convert to the contrary it says why convert the whole idea is this is your way this is my way so you don't change mummy suddenly in the middle of your life you got your own mummy progress that way so this is if you like is ingrained in the hindu culture as well as the philosophy i'm taking you right back to rigveda 